What if I told you that by the end of today's session, you would be able to speak about today's topic, which is hobbies with confidence. If you are someone who has very little time to study, you're uninspired by traditional courses and textbooks, well, this weekly dose of topic-based modern English mastery is the boost you've been waiting for. And in today's episode, I'm going to teach you four important phrases in English about the topic of hobbies. And these words will help you speak fluently and confidently. And by the end of part one, you will be able to discuss hobbies using advanced vocabulary with confidence. I said part one. Yeah, because I have more in store for you. So stay tuned for part two, where I will teach you. Hey, you've got to stay tuned to find out, but trust me, it's going to be worth it. Okay, let's start with our vocabulary. Engage in recreational pursuits. This is so much better than saying, I have a hobby or I do something. And what does it mean to engage in recreational pursuits? So a recreational pursuit is, in essence, a hobby. It means to engage in, to participate in recreational pursuits, plural, various leisure activities. And to cultivate hobbies, this means to develop and nurture interests or pastimes. Pastimes are also hobbies. Pastime is a synonym for hobbies. Pursue leisure interests, and this means to actively follow, to pursue interests or activities for relaxation and enjoyment. Last up, we have indulge in recreational activities, and this means to discover, to experience, to enjoy different leisure pursuits. Now, let's take it up a notch. We're going to do a reading with the vocabulary in context. This is really important. Learning vocabulary is great. Learning, memorizing vocab lists, that's great. But you need to use it with precision. You need to use phrases with precision. And learning them in context is the way to achieve this. In today's fast-paced world, Finding time to unwind, to relax, and indulge in leisure activities is essential for maintaining a healthy work-life balance. Many people choose to engage in recreational pursuits to escape the daily stresses and rejuvenate their minds and bodies. Some individuals cultivate hobbies like painting, gardening, or playing musical instruments allowing them to express their creativity and passion. Others pursue leisure interests such as hiking, attending art classes, or exploring new cuisines, seeking adventure and excitement in their free time. Now, how many of the phrases can you identify? Engage in recreational pursuits, well done. Cultivate hobbies, this is a lovely phrase. Pursue leisure interests, perfect. Exploring new things, well done, well done. Exploring recreational activities like rock climbing, kayaking, or attending live music events can also provide a thrilling escape from routine. Routine can be a bit boring, right? Let me know your thoughts. Okay, let's look at some example sentences with different grammar tenses. Engage in recreational pursuits. And in the present tense, she engages in recreational pursuits every weekend, often going for long hikes in the mountains. Past tense, past tense, he engaged in recreational pursuits throughout his youth, spending countless hours cycling and skateboarding. Let's move on to the future tense. They plan to engage in recreational pursuits during their vacation in the future, including snorkeling, surfing, and beach volleyball. Okay, how are you doing so far? Good, let's move on to pursue leisure interests and the present continuous tense, despite her busy schedule, 
even though she has a busy schedule, she is pursuing leisure interests such as learning to play the guitar and taking cooking classes. Present continuous, she is doing. Past perfect tense, before moving to the city, he had pursued leisure interests like hiking and camping in the mountains, enjoying, cherishing the tranquility of nature. But now he's in the city. Guess it's not so easy to go hiking, right? And what about the future continuous tense? Throughout the summer, they will be pursuing leisure interests such as out, uh, attending outdoor concerts and exploring local markets, embracing, enjoying, accepting the vibrant culture of the city. Next up, we're moving to cultivate hobbies, present perfect tense. Over the years, she has cultivated hobbies like gardening and pottery, finding solace, peace, and joy in these creative pursuits. Past continuous tense, while he was studying abroad, he was cultivating hobbies such as photography and writing, documenting his adventures and experiences. Past continuous, he was doing those things. Future perfect tense, by next year, they will have cultivated hobbies such as bird watching and woodworking, immersing themselves in nature and craftsmanship. Future perfect tense, by next year, they will have done these things. They will have cultivated hobbies. Well done if you're still with me. This is a pretty intensive grammar session with the advanced vocabulary. Like I said, by the end of the session, you're going to be a superstar. You're going to be able to speak about hobbies using four advanced phrases, two idioms, and all of this amazing grammar. Let's move on to indulge in recreational activities. And recreational activities are your hobbies. Present simple tense, every weekend, they indulge in recreational activities like biking along scenic trails and picnicking in the park. It sounds amazing. Past simple tense, last summer, past simple tense, finished over and done with. She indulged in recreational activities such as paddle boarding and zip lining during her vacation in Costa Rica. When was this? Last summer, past simple tense, over and done with, past simple. Future simple tense. Next month, they will indulge in a new recreational activity, which is horseback riding, please ignore the as, and wine tasting in the countryside. My apologies for the typo. Now, it's fun time podcast time. We're going to test your listening skills and engage in a mini podcast, but don't go away because there's a bonus in the end. My podcasts often introduce two new idioms, so you need to stay tuned to level up even further. Idiomatic language is native English speaking. Are you ready? Let's do this. Hey there fellow leisure enthusiasts. Welcome back to my cozy corner of the podcast world where we're going to dive into all things fun, exciting, and downright delightful. I'm your host, Nas, native English speaker, CELTA certified with 12 years of international experience. And today, we're going to embark on a journey through the wonderful world of hobbies. So grab your favorite snack, kick back, grab a notebook, make some notes, and hey, let's chat. Now let's talk about diving into hobbies head first. You know, those activities that make your heart sing and your soul dance. Whether it's painting, hiking, or mastering the art of gourmet cooking, hobbies are the spice of life. For me, there's nothing quite like the thrill of exploring new hobbies. I've recently been cultivating my passion for photography and let me tell you, it's been an 
absolute blast capturing those picture perfect moments. Do you love photography? Let me know in the comments below. Speaking of passions, let's not forget about following our bliss. Yep, I'm talking about pursuing those leisure interests that light a fire in your soul. Whether it's strumming away on a guitar, getting lost in a good book, or hitting the dance floor with reckless abandon, following our passions is what makes life truly worth living. So go ahead, my friends, and pursue those leisure interests with all the energy and gusto you've got. Now, let's shift gears and explore the thrill of discovering new recreational activities. From adrenaline-pumping adventures like rock climbing and kayaking to more laid-back pursuits like bird-watching and gardening, there's a whole world of fun waiting to be explored. So grab your gear, round up your crew and your friends, and let's embark on an unforgettable journey filled with laughter, excitement, and endless possibilities. And there you have it, a whirlwind tour through the enchanting realm of hobbies with a lot of vocabulary thrown in. Let me know what you have jotted down in your notebooks. Remember, life is too short to be spent on the sidelines. So go ahead, dive into those hobbies head first. Follow your passions with reckless abandon and explore the world of recreational activities. Until next time, happy hobbing. But hey, don't go away because you know what's coming up next. Did you hear this idiom have the time of one's life? What do you think it means? We had the time of our lives on our trip to Hawaii, snorkeling in crystal clear waters and watching breathtaking sunsets. So what do you think it means when I say we have the time of our lives? Did we have a good time or did we have a bad time? Come on, guys. You know the answer to this one. It's having a good time. Moving on to following one's passion. And this means to pursue activities that bring fulfillment and happiness. Do you follow your passion? After retiring, he decided to follow his passion for sailing, spending his days cruising along the coast and competing in regattas. Now, what do you plan to do after retiring? Which one of your passions do you plan to follow? Comment below. You know how this works. Okay, now let's look at those idioms in context. So far, you've mastered four advanced phrases. You know how to use them perfectly. Now it's time to do the same with our two idioms. Have the time of one's life. It means to have an extremely enjoyable and memorable experience. Extremely, not so-so, extremely. Last summer, we had the time of our lives exploring Europe. Do you remember the last time you had the time of your life? You know what to do, comment below. Present, perfect, she's had the time of her life since she started her new job. And future simple, I'm sure we will, I'm sure we'll have the time of our lives at the concert next weekend in the future. We will, we'll, wa, wa sound, we'll. Perfect. Now let's move on to idiom number two, following one's passions. By the way, if you'd like the PDF for this session, click on the link in the description below. What does it mean to follow one's passion, to pursue activities that bring fulfillment and happiness? Example one, present continuous. He's following his passion by studying marine biology at university. Future continuous, next year. I will, I'll, I will, I'll. I'll be following my passion for travel by embarking on a round the world trip. What have we mastered today? Four advanced phrases, two idioms, and a whole lot of grammar. 
Now, if you enjoyed this session, like and subscribe, comment, engage, and hey, get ready because we're just getting started. Stay tuned, like and subscribe for next week's session of Modern English Mastery, always topic-based, always filled with advanced phrases in context with our mini podcast and always, always a bonus couple of idioms thrown in. But not only have you learned these phrases, you've learned them in context, you've learned them using lots and lots of examples. So guess what? You are ready. You are prepared to go off into the world and talk about hobbies worth, confidence, and fluency. Thanks for joining me. I'm your host, Nas, native English speaker, CELTA certified, and my goal is to empower students who want to reach advanced English level. Hey, by the end of this year, you're not going to be stuck anymore. Thanks for joining me. Ciao.